Hey folks, today I'm going to talk to you about how to insert arbitrary JavaScript into a Magento page. I'm going to do two methods. One is inline, uh, which I don't recommend, but you might need to use at some point, so I'll just show you how to do that pretty easily. Um, but the second and most important way is uh, how to inject JavaScript via the um, x-magento-init um, uh, method that uses Magento's sort of built-in required JS uh, pipeline to find your JavaScript file and load it without having to have inline JavaScript, but also giving you the ability to configure things and pass things into that JavaScript uh, component or just uh, basic JavaScript uh, as you want. So let's get started. I do have a default Magento theme here, nothing special. I have, um, and it's the blank theme, by the way, I have my administration pa uh, panel open. Um, I haven't changed anything here. Um, so this is all default. So what I want to do is I want to I want to make this home page just send up an alert so that the user can uh, say, I don't know, say, welcome to my store. The simplest method, uh, you shouldn't need a ton of uh, explanation of how this works. Uh, just doing inline JavaScript, you can go into a CMS page and then do something like alert, welcome to my store. Very, very simple stuff here, but Magento lets you do this because uh, it, it strives for flexibility. Reload this page, and we have welcome to my store. Very cool. Let's remove that though because you know what? We don't want to do that. We want to we want to do it the smart Magento way where we're not we're not using inline uh, JavaScript. So instead, we're going to do script type equals as as you saw in this last video text and it uh, oh I'm sorry x uh, Magento in it. And then we have <clears throat> just our default uh, block of JSON. Um, so what this is going to do is you're going to first pass in an element. Uh, let's use star. When you use star, um, what this does uh, is anytime Magento is parsing uh, this page, I'm or, sorry, uh, require.js is parsing this page and looking for things to load, if it sees star, it's just going to load everything you tell it to load under this. So how do we tell it what to load? Well, we have uh, an object here, and we just say, uh, let's just say I want to load up a new hello world.js, which doesn't exist yet, but I'll make it here in a second. Um, and then just for, for placeholder for now, let's just enter a couple variables here. Let's just say um, a equals 1, uh, b equals 2. This should do absolutely nothing for now, uh, which is what we want. Might even throw up an error, but I'm, not, I'm actually not 100% sure of that. Because, okay, so yeah, it's looking for hello world.js, but it can't find it. So what we gotta do is we gotta make it. So I'm just in my design front end Magento blank theme. I'm gonna come down here to our web directory and to our JS directory. And this is where it's looking for hello world.js. Now I can do a bunch of things here, but I, I think I just want to start simple and just be like a uh, simple hello to you. So let's see what this does. Does it load hello world.js? It does not. We might need to clear the cache for this to work properly. So let's go ahead and do that. do have my cache disabled. So yeah, it should just, should be loading up that script. There it is, it is loading it up. Oh, I tried to load it up. Hmm, I wonder why it isn't able to find it. Okay, I figured it out. Um, Something important to keep in mind is that when you enter these um, scripts here, if you enter a .js there, it's going to, instead of search uh, or put this in the smart path, 
it's actually going to just try to use that as the absolute path to search for. So it's actually going to be looking for this, which it can't load. It's going to 404, as you see here. But instead, what we really want is we want it to link to a more specific path, which is something like this, static, the version, front-end Magento blank, which goes deep into the core um, of how Magento finds static assets. And the way we tell it to actually do that instead of di uh, directly linking to the file, so you actually have to remove the extension. That way Magento will be like, oh, I need to figure out where this is, use the fallback, etc., etc., and then it will find the correct script. So now when we load it up, not only do we see our simple hello to you, sir, we now see that hello world is actually loading from the correct path. Very cool. So now let's get those variables, shall we? Let's get these variables out of the home page so that we can use them and do something with them. So what do we got? Looks like we want to get A and B uh, to show. So what we got to do here is we got to use a method that is sort of standard to require JS. And that is to use the define function. Um, and define uh, defines a component on your, uh, in your uh, web page. So all you really have to do with this, well, let, let's just say there's, there's a couple things you can do here. So let's say you want to use jQuery. You can actually pass in jQuery here. I'm not going to use that, but let's use it as an example. Um, and then, you know, jQuery, and then we can use underscore if we want. And then you just put them as the function arguments one at a time. So we have jQuery here, we have underscore here. I'll use jQuery as just a, um, well, let me just console, console.log that, just to just give you proof that that works. But then let's move our um, hello world alert to here. And that will uh, give you an idea of how this works. See, works the same, because it's loading what's in this function. But what it's really looking for here is for you to return a function. And what it's going to pass into that function um, are your configuration options and the element you call it on. So. What that means is, well, let me just log config here, and then let me log element. But to go back real quick, just to show you that it's actually calling up jQuery uh, here, well, it looks like it might not be. Uh, I wonder if I spelled that wrong. Might have spelled it wrong. I guess I should probably comment this out first, yes. There's the hello world. There we go. You believe select your context. Yeah, yeah, that's jQuery. So jQuery, you have to do, I think uh, one of the rules of thumb is that most things uh, here are uh, lower cased, at most are camel cased. So keep that in mind. But there's also a nice list on the official documentation for exactly what these look like. I'm going to remove the dependencies. I don't need them right now. Um, for my simple little component. And now I want to show you what it means just to have a regular component here. I'm just going to default back to the console.log. So what this is, here's our A1 and our B2, and then false. So we have our configuration. Cool. We can do whatever we want with them. But what does this mean, false? Well, since we're binding um, this X Magento init call to all the elements, it's actually not going to pass you back uh, a uh, anything at all, really. So let's just let's just change this to something like um, dot I don't know dot catalog. Well, let's let's find an actual selector on the page just in case. So let's just yeah dot base. What this means is that when Magento is searching through this uh, and require JS land, it's going to find something called dot base. And when it finds it, it's going to pass that in along with the configuration to this uh, component. 
So with any luck, we should see dot base echoed out or logged out there. Ah, there we go. So it actually goes a step further and doesn't just dot base it or um, grab the element. Uh, I'm sorry return the selector, it actually uh, finds the element and spits it out onto the page for you. And then, just for good measure, let's see what happens when you put something in that doesn't exist. Just gobbledygook there, refresh it, voila! Notice it's not loading the component at all. But just to give you an idea of what it's doing. It is actually loading this part, but since it never finds element, it never wants to load up your component. Ah, see, I'm wrong about that. It looks like it even goes so far as to, if it doesn't even find the component, it'll never even load up the script. Neat. So, Require.js is very powerful. It uh, allows you to separate your dependencies up, and the way Magento does it is extremely smart, in my opinion. So uh, definitely use it to your advantage. You can inject stuff like this anywhere in your modules, uh, in your theme. You can put it, uh, you, you can um, override certain things, remove them, play around with them. It's very, very powerful, and I suggest that you stick to this convention because it allows you to separate your components into nice, neat um, JavaScript uh, functions that are only loaded the one time they're needed. Uh, the client then caches them. If you're using H2, this becomes extremely powerful for you. That way you only have to serve up, serve up uh, small, specific files when they're changed. Happy hacking, and uh, until next time.